Hello and welcome back to Intimate Encounters. You're here with Samantha and Adam and in today's episode we're going to be talking about about introversion and extroversion and do opposites really attract and what really the difference is we as you may be able to tell are a bit just a little oh, extroverted. Just a tiny little bit. <laughs> a tiny little bit. Nobody knows. No one well, knows. We know. But yeah, we anyway. found someone. We found <laughs> one of Sam's friends. And someone that, if you are watching from Bansko, may have met him already. Mm -hmm. I personally met him at Sun & Co. in Havea. And, and I heard a lot about him. A very, lot. very good things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, one of which being that they took them on a 12-hour hike once. Uh, and they weren't expecting to go on a 12-hour hike. Beautiful. Beautiful but times. It's a long. Just... <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> He's a great guy, and he is an introvert. Or maybe, maybe he can tell us a little bit about where he thinks he lies on the introversion-extroversion scale, yes. and also introduce himself. So we're going to pass it over to you, Zach. <laughs> What's happening, you guys? <laughs> um, my name is Zach, as you've heard. Um, yeah, Sam and I have met each other a couple of, two years ago, right? Huh? It's, been a, it's been a while now. Yeah, and I we started talking about introversion, extroversion, a topic that I've been pretty curious about, um, mostly in relation to Myers Briggs, actually. And so, hmm. yeah, I'm still kind of exploring it. It's it's definitely like a it's got its own life cycle of where it fits into my life, and happy to share a little bit with you guys. Cool. And where would you? Yeah. What, okay, before we started the show, I Sam said wanted to make clear that. It's not really, there isn't a total extrovert and a total introvert, but we're all somewhere on a spectrum. Yeah. And I think for mm -hmm. me personally, I'm definitely more extroverted in <clears throat> situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think both Sam and I and would class ourselves as... As extroverts in general. But mm -hmm. for example, I really like talking one-on-one -on -one with people. I mm -hmm. love being in a big group. And I... I Okay, I do like standing in front of a group and like talking to them, but they're still just listening. It's like one-on-one -on -one at yeah. that point as well. <laughs> but I prefer yeah. having uh, close, intimate encounters with people. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, that wow. That was, you're a pro. That was, that was good. So that I can actually develop a relationship with someone so that I can hear about their day so that it's not just this superficial level mm. encounter that I think people associate with that. Extra mm. What do you... What do you think about that, Zach? Um, the way I see it is like, and this is something that I've been observing more as I've been getting older, mm -hmm. is that like in my 20s, I tended to be very like bottom tier introvert. Um, and then as I'm progressing, like I'm becoming more extroverted. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing with other extroverts who are used to be like really high up there, they're kind of like toning it down and being able to have like one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, so with like Myers-Briggs, the idea is that you kind of equalize yourself a little bit over time because you realize kind of your, your weaknesses and your strengths. And it's, uh, yeah, it's something to like be self-conscious of and kind of adapt over time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned Myers-Briggs. I don't know if, mm. what, um, what is your personality type on Myers-Briggs? I'm an INF, INFJ. Ooh, okay. So I'm ETP. <laughs> I'm ENFP. Okay. FP. ENFP. Um, I actually, Ooh, both of you. I believe that <laughs> No, my, we're different. We're different. No, we're different. ENFP, <laughs> ESTP. Okay. I believe my perfect match is an INTJ. So I think that's very similar to you. Ooh. So that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get <laughs> <laughs> okay so i love how you brought up that over time you get more on the same level it's changed a bit as yeah. i mean as your personality does over time yeah. or it, it should or it could mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. let's let's talk about what do you find yourself pulled towards right now in terms of a partner if you're looking for someone to date Mind mm. the fact that you're in a relationship. Mind, yeah, part of that. <laughs> so say but I mean, not. You, <laughs> you could say, but you could say that what you like about your partner is this, this, and this. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, for, for me, I definitely need somebody who I can 
connect like on a very deep level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the introversion scale to like, um, to have those quiet moments of intimacy and really like talk through issues, talk through problems. And yeah, um, I think that's probably one of the first qualities, but at the same time, I, I've, I've been with other people who are like at the same level as I am and somehow we don't like go up anymore. So it's just like, and that can be frustrating. So I also need somebody who has like the extroversion part of myself um, where I can kind of amplify that. Like, okay, we do all go out, we do do things, we do like connect with other people. Um, so we're aware like that's a good thing to do. Like not just stay introverted all the time. Yeah. Would you say that your partner now is more extroverted? Mm, I would say she's a bit more extroverted than I am. Uh, um, like we both enjoy talking about topics that we're passionate about and like I, I feel comfortable like talking in front of a group of people. She does lectures, but like when we talk deeply on something, it's it's like it's the same. Like we have that desire to just like have a day where we like get in the bathtub and like chill out and do nothing else all day, you know? Great day. I love baths. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love them so much. <laughs> she does. She takes them like regularly. We have this big water. <laughs> This, is <laughs> this big water tank she drapes the water. <laughs> like three times three to times to one bath. We're not an environmentally friendly we're not an environment podcast show thing, so you know, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I can hmm. I yeah. I've dated norm normal people. Normal people. <laughs> you're gonna say I've dated normal people and they're just not as fun. <laughs> I've normally dated people that are a bit more extroverted historically. They are loud and crazy and uh -huh. it just led to a lot of headbutting because mm. you're not funnier than me. <laughs> <laughs> you're not louder than me or cooler than me. I am center stage. So that was a bit of a problem. So. Yeah. I tend to find mm. that I'm a bit more attracted in a romantic way to introverts. Mm. What do you think? I, so my first ever girlfriend was pretty extroverted. But all the girls I've been most into since and have had the longest relationships with since have been introverted. And I've been thinking about this recently, how it's exactly what you said, Zach, about that deep, still, intimate connection. Mm. I think because... I'm running around crazy loud, laughing, joking, shouting in life. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that having those beautiful still moments with a partner really rounds it out. I think if I was loud bah, rah, rah, in life and then also in bed or just with my partner, like, ah! <laughs> like, no, stop! I haven't slept in years! Yes, it's like me. I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure it would work as well. So, mm. yeah, I find I feel you. there's something to me. So I think because if I talk to people normally, mm. I'd like to get people talking and opening up to me and interested and we're having a conversation. Yeah. But if, so, if someone, if I'm speaking to a girl, and she, she's a bit harder to open up. Mm. It's like a, a challenge. And I, there's something I really enjoy about that. Okay, see, I don't like that at all. Mm. I don't think that introversion has to do with them not talking to you. Okay. Because I think that I have some of my best conversations with introverts. Mm. So, I mean, Zach and I, mm -hmm. when we had, we lived together for three days or something like that. <laughs> True, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. But we had some really good conversations about, about some deep shit. Mm. And mm. in general, people that I meet that are, that tend to, kind of identify more as introverts mm -hmm. i i find that it's easier to talk to them in a way because as an extrovert mm -hmm. i go and i ask those questions i kind of probe i say what's up do this ha, 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 ha. and i keep poking them and then they say wow we could actually just we could just have a conversation you don't have to poke and prod me i'm, yeah. I'm a person and yeah. and they do mm -hmm. open. those are some of the most rewarding conversations i've had Hmm. Ah. Yeah, you're awesome. you're definitely a, a prober. <laughs> <laughs> that was my nickname in high school. Prober? 
Murphy. Yeah. No. <laughs> it wasn't really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's an interesting point then, Sam, though, about I've just said it seems to me that introverts are, are shy and I have to try and eke out conversation topics from them. So, but you disagree with that. So, Zach, what's your take on this? Hmm. Um, I, I'd say it, it's different with, with each person. I have people that I feel are generally interested and curious about wanting to talk about something. Mm-hmm. And then there's like extroverted people who are more like ego, like talking to themselves really through you. Like, hey, I need somebody to talk to you. Let me talk to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I can't, I can't deal with that. Like, no, so it's, 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 it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a case by case, I would say. Uh, mm-hmm. um, so, do you mean that they're not being actively involved in the conversation? Mm. Mm, I, I think, like, one of my strong points, and maybe even generally for introverts, is they're really good at listening. Um, and I think that's how you connect more intimately with somebody who's introverted so if you, if the extrovert is tending to just like talk without listening and giving the space for the conversation to happen i think it turns to a lot of introverts off because it's just it's not interesting um but on my end like i i notice that sometimes i yeah take a little time to open up with people Mm-hmm. unless it's like wow like we're talking about something that's right up my alley mm-hmm. um then it's yeah then i can kind of just dive straight in mm-hmm. oh for sure and like that's a very mm-hmm. valid point active listening yeah both adam and i i feel are very active listeners yeah in our general i i don't think we would be able to have a podcast like this where we're having these intimate conversations with mm-hmm. people about their lives mm-hmm weren't actively listening and that's one thing such a strong point yeah sorry that's one thing uh, when you were saying there about having a deep conversation with one person I love that I love just letting the other person talk and saying oh what did you mean by that and oh tell me more about this and it's so interesting for me to see how they react but I feel that in a way as well so I love to sit back and let them talk and I try and inject a little, ooh, like, what about this? What about this? Boom. Oh, can you be fun in this way? Can you do it this way? And, Mm. yeah, I love that. I feel that's, like, yeah, that's the the best way to get to know someone, I think. Yeah. For sure. On on that note. On that note. We can talk about dates. (laughs) What's your idea of the perfect first date? Because I would say I love, I've said this on this podcast before, I just love a standard bar date. You go, get two drinks, and you just sit at the bar mm. and talk for an hour. For me, that's I love getting to know someone like that because you just see what they're like in in a conversation. And I feel yeah. a big part of a relationship is like that. But Sam doesn't like that, do you? I don't, but that's aside the point. Okay. What do you think, Zach? What would be your idea of a good first date? Um... I think, yeah, the bar thing could work actually for me, but it's, I was just thinking about what you guys said earlier and I feel that I need, yeah, like for me, I need a space that can kind of contain the conversation a little bit. So like a loud, crazy bar is not right the right place. Like a dive bar that's like, ah, yeah. like I can't, I can't do that. But like a nice like little wine bar or like, you know, a quiet place to talk. I'm happy to do it over a beer or some tea. Mm-hmm. Actually don't not much of a drinker, but like, yeah, I, I'm happy to, to still go out and have that conversation with people. Um, but personally, I like going outside. Like, I think there's a, a space to, like hiking is a great thing for me personally when I go on dates. Um, there's kind of a space to like soak in around you. And that really like s- is supportive for me because there's not the need to be talking all the time. So there's, you're engaging with other things. Um, and then I think people kind of let their guards down a little bit when you're outside. So it's, it's a good way to connect more intimately as well. Mm. For sure. Uh, like the reason that I'm not a big fan of the bar date is because as you said, it's very loud. It's super distracting. Mm. I 
have a hard time focusing on something when there's a lot of things happening around me. Mm. I just want to pick out conversation things like I can focus on a conversation with someone but if it's super distracting I can't do it mm. very easily so mm. for me going to a bar it's not really going to show me a lot about you mm. and I agree with the hike I, I would love to go on a hiking date or yeah. go up the mountain uh, like snowboarding or something novel especially if they suggest it but if I suggest it as well we could go on a on a walk Speaking of Bansko, going on a walking tour of Bansko, mm. going on a, an exploration of all of the abandoned buildings in all of Bansko, mm, which yeah. would be a really long <laughs> That'd be very <pretty> alive. <laughs> Maybe just the top three. A couple. That'd be good, though, as well. Or cooking together, or like, doing something that's just like a bit out of the ordinary, because mm. I just feel that going for a dinner or mm. a drink is... You're just going to be, you're not really going to see a lot about the person, even mm. though you may be able to connect. Yeah. Mm. I liked what you said earlier about like picking out conversations when it's too loud, because mm. I, I tend to have the same thing. And I, I recognize that like part of the, the desire for introversion is like, no, not the desire for introversion, but like how I relate to it is that like having too much stimulus for me um tends to be it just drains my battery very quickly um whereas like i can go to a pretty loud party but I, my capacity might be like an hour and then i'm just like i need to go to the bathroom or the kitchen and like go somewhere super quiet or go outside like i can't be in that house or i can't be in the bar anymore no. i do the exact same thing all the clubs that i go to in berlin i love them i love dancing but i can dance to max like 30 minutes or so and then all I want to do is go outside sit near the fire have a chat with a person next to me in a mm. quiet space and that's one of my yeah. favorite parts about these places it's, it's like a it's like a mini festival mm. where you get to go mm. home shower that night <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I like what you said about about the space Zach I hadn't really thought of that before I feel like I don't leave much room for much space in my life in general. I like to fill my life up with lots of things. So I think it's cool to say that if you have space, for example, when you're hiking, there's time for when you're not talking, there's time to just be mm. together rather than constantly interacting with things. Do you, do you feel that, to me, that seems like a more introverted quality, wanting some space like that. Would, would, would you guys agree? Or is this common? Or am I weird that I haven't <laughs> <laughs> I don't leave much space? It's kind of ironic that I didn't like add a few answers then. <laughs> so for me, I still find it hard sometimes to leave that space. Yeah. Just like you have yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. But over time, like Zach was saying earlier, over time you start to adapt because you get older, because you mm. are falling more into the center of everything. Mm -hmm. And even when we were hiking the other day, talking to our ghost friends. <laughs> yeah. Just me and you and ghost friends. Just me and you and ghost friends. <clears throat> yep. Like you were talking to your ghost friend and I was pretty happy for a large chunk of it just walking on my own and being in my own thoughts and being in my own space and I didn't need to talk to someone the whole time mm. and I almost felt like accosted in a way when I I did have to talk like I mean two of those ghost friends were a bit accosting so yeah. <laughs> we, won't go into that. we won't go into that but I just felt like I'm in nature I'm having this nice experience with Adam and my ghost friends and mm it's okay that we don't talk all the time. It's okay mm. that we're just having this shared experience that mm. it doesn't necessarily have to always be about something. Mm. It's okay that you're just vibing off of each other in a sense, in that shared community. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Hmm. I wouldn't say, <clears throat> sorry, Zach, do you have anything to add? I feel, I think I'm good. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, go ahead go ahead 
I, as again, as I was thinking about this, I, I realized uh, so my family, when we have dinner together, and my whole family life is always, if ever six of us, so I have three younger sisters that I would live with, my mom and my stepdad, and we'd sit down for dinner, and it would just be an hour, hour and a half of us just shouting, laughing, interrupting, craziness. And for me, that's totally normal. And I've had people come round to my house and they're just sat there in silence, like, what is going on? Like, this is insane. So I feel like my upbringing <coughs> bringing hasn't um, promoted much space. And I feel like I'm just, I'm only just noticing this literally right now. <laughs> Uh, how much I we're just, always learning yeah i don't i don't <laughs> mm. face. so that's cool i feel like it, yeah i just think that's cool if if you don't have something to add, i have something to add to this yeah go <laughs> go for it yeah yeah go for it so my family <clears throat> my mom and my brother are very introverted and mm. me and my dad are very similar like we are mm. we are out there <laughs> and i <laughs> Because I grew up with an introverted younger brother, it's made me better at picking up on introverts and seeing that they're uncomfortable. Because I notice, especially in large groups, because I do like hosting events and I do like having a lot of people around me, if someone's not really talking to anyone or if someone hasn't said something for a while, I'll, I'll probe them, I'll poke them <laughs> and say, hey, what do you think of this? And then try and just kind of like hold, like shh. <laughs> I was <so> excited, that. <laughs> like, like shh, let Zach answer, you know, uh, or yeah, yeah. or let somebody else answer because we're dominating this conversation. And yeah. I think that this person might have something to add, or I'll say, pull them aside, or just go up to them at a party and say, hey, like, how's it going? Do you want to? I was a smoker for the longest time because I loved doing this, just pulling people's. Like, you want to go for a smoke? Like, this uh, is such an easy mm -hmm. break away from a loud. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, I I love that. I can sniff them out and have those kind of things. Do you know what I think? <laughs> Do you know exactly? Wait, sorry, I know. I just wanted to, but I couldn't. Sorry, it was like Tourette's. I couldn't stop myself. Zach, go on. <laughs> ah! uh, uh. Yeah, the thing with, with introverts is you got to be okay with silence. So we might just have to do this for a little bit. Mm, okay. This is no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think those are great. I think those are great points. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't know if I have much to add to that. I, I think you guys kind of touched on, I mean, I, yeah, I definitely relate to both sides of that. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying so hard not to just dive straight into <laughs> kind of gap. I really want, I have something to say as well, but I always feel bad for wanting to say it now. Actually, what, what do you, what is a good strategy for helping us cope with silences? Yeah. I think that would be a really, mm. nice. a very good injection point right there. <laughs> um well what, what what's the, what's the urge that comes up for you when the, when there is silence to kind of i'll let you answer cool <laughs> so for for me my like i just said my family is mental it's just loud and crazy all the time. And all the time we're talking, we're fighting to talk, we're fighting over each other. We're, we're saying, hey, yo, oh, blah, blah, blah. what about this, what about this? Oh my God, what is wrong with you? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and it's great. And for me, that's how conversations are. So when you said, <laughs> this, is, this sounds so bad, but when you said, oh, there's someone there, you know, a quiet person who hasn't spoken in a while, my brain goes, well, they're boring. <laughs> Let's keep, let's keep the other fun, extroverted people talking, and maybe let, let's ostracize this quiet, boring person. Survival of the they obviously can't keep up with the amount of fun we're having in this conversation. <laughs> Genuinely. Um, I think that's a great... I think you've highlighted a weakness there mm -hmm. with my uh, conversational skills. Like, for me, what you're talking about with your family exhausts me. No way. 
I like it when I'm the center of attention, obviously, or if there's like one or two, maybe three people bouncing off of each other. Mm. But if people right. are talking to me, then I am done with the conversation immediately. I, huh. I don't give a shit about it. I don't need to buy for attention. I would rather go and have a conversation with someone else. So maybe I'm more introverted. Mm. It's like my nightmares, what you're saying. No family. way. I would be like, fuck this. Because for me, conversations are all, about, I guess they're all about people saying little bits and then we chime in and try and make a funny comment about it or try and move it in a different direction. I don't like talking and having seven people listen to me or having four people sat down there and listen to me. I find it really weird when everyone starts listening to me. No, but if everybody was listening to you and then everyone mm. bounced ideas off of you, that would be different. Yeah. But it sounds like you're just interrupting each other. Yeah, well, and we are. Actually, but then you're not but, actually listening to each other. But we're talking for a little bit of time. It's not a prolonged amount, usually. It's like a tiny little... Everyone has a little bit to say and kind of on, on repeat. So do you feel like you are listening mm. to the people in your conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we wouldn't be able to say something funny about it okay. if, we, if we couldn't. All right. But what you're <laughs> saying, I think, is, is you like... You like people to talk for longer. Is no. that it? Not necessarily talk for longer, can but I, be engaged. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> can I, <laughs> can I uh, let me give you my take on this. Um, so I think the way I process it is, is this, like, if I, if I don't have something to say right away, it's going to kind of get logged in, and I, I process. Like, I think introverts have a good way. I mean, it's a generalization, but a lot of introverts tend to fall into the creative aspect and they like think a lot, process a lot. They do their writing, they do their music, they do their art. Um, and so like a conversation happens and like, I, I might still be thinking about like what you guys said five minutes ago, like that's also running in my head. So there's a lot being digested in different ways. And personally, like, having gone through like yoga training, having gone through that part to kind of explore more of like how I learn. Um, I recognize that I, I'm also like reading a lot into people's body languages and I'm like feeling a lot into kind of what the undertone of the conversation is, not just like what's spiking and pushing the ball forward in terms of like the conversation in that moment and who's talking. Um, <clears throat> and that's part of the reason I like, I like conversations that go a little deeper instead of just like kind of like what what I consider bantering sometimes so like I can do it for a little bit but then it's just like where like what where is this going like I'm getting bored because it's just like a lot of this going on um so that's that's my personal take on yeah how I feel about that <laughs> 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 I don't think we will <laughs> <laughs> you could be in a relationship with Zach. <laughs> you could be friends with Zach. You could be in a relationship. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, but oh wait, can I? Yeah. I still have another question. Which is so uh, for me, it seems silence is a, wrong i don't think it's the right word but it's i don't feel very comfortable in silence and i feel i want to know from your perspective Zach, what's happening during silence because for me if i was silent because i don't have anything to say because maybe i feel a bit awkward because i can't think of any in anything interesting to add maybe i'm bored what does being mm -hmm. in silence mean well for both of you in what what situation yeah oh okay like so what context? so i'm i'm going just for a in a, in a in a conversation so if i'm having a conversation with someone usually i want it us to talk usually silence isn't much of a part of it but i feel you've both said that silence is a part for example if you're hiking there's time for you to be silent but usually i it's not time i do very well when i'm around people so what's mm -hmm. going through your, so because I feel mm -hmm. when it is happening, I feel a bit awkward and, mm -hmm. and wrong that I'm being quiet around people. I'm around people. I should be talking to people because that's what you do when you're around people in my mind. So when you're silent, mm -hmm. what's going through your head? Obviously you're not, going, oh, this feels so awkward and embarrassing, <laughs> <laughs> right? You must, be thinking, you must be thinking something else. <laughs> no, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the conversation. Sometimes I'm just thinking 
about absolutely anything else or how pretty the tree is or mm. there's a squirrel or whatever <laughs> if I'm having an intimate one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone depending on the circumstance like if mm. we're having an argument and I take a pause it's because I'm trying to reflect and not say something yeah. bad yeah, 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 yeah. if we're having a jokey conversation maybe I'm trying to hold in a fart I don't know um <laughs> What do you think that? <laughs> hmm, that's a good question. I, it, I think I've noticed that, like, if if I have something to think about, I'll literally like pause mid conversation and like allow the space to process, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. Like, I I don't feel like I need to just talk through what I'm feeling to kind of like chase at the thought. Um, so like on my own like I think that translates into like meditation and self-reflection so like it feels it feels like a safe and comfortable like place to go to if I'm like okay wow like somebody gave me something to think about I'm literally gonna take the time and think about it right now yeah for sure so do you do you give do you tell people I need space in order to think about it? Or... No, I think sometimes I just enjoy like making it awkward as well, <laughs> and kind of like own that space because that's introversion space. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Um, I love this conversation, but I'm actually going to say this is one of the last questions. If that's cool, because yeah. what I'm really curious about is. <laughs> how you've been dealing with the with being trapped in your space mm. trapped are you loving it are you hating it mm. what are some tips that you can give us extroverts uh, in order to really enjoy quarantine life mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm still dealing with it for <laughs> sure uh just to give you a little context right now i'm in a space like a it's a it's a large like loft mm. but there are no walls and i find that pretty challenging like with the exception of the bathroom there is no personal space and even though i can be like i don't know 15 meters away on the opposite spectrum of the department mm. um the fact that like the sound gets interrupted like you know, like somebody walks by um or like yeah there's there's just like i i'm aware that somebody is always present uh i think this is another aspect of introversion it's like i'm aware that somebody's always present in the house um and i'm self-aware like am i being too loud am i being like social enough and, and these things kind of like take up part of my psyche throughout the day um whereas like I really enjoy being by myself where I don't have to like be considerate at all of what's going on with me or with, with other people around me. Um, so I'm taking a lot of time out to take walks and even though like we're not allowed to sit in parks, like I'll find these little nooks and kind of disappear <laughs> throughout the city. And yeah, being outside still is kind of a good refuge for that. Yeah, and a lot of a lot more self care on meditation and just keeping up with these practices that feel grounding for me, even if I need to like go down and do it in the garage or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm literally like working down in the garage like half the time. <laughs> I'm just like I need to get out of the house. <laughs> Where are you right now? If you're in the loft, it looks like you have walls. Uh, do you not have walls in front of you? Yeah no there's no yeah there's a screen ah. and that's kind of the <laughs> yeah i guess i found that as well sometimes i just need especially on my days off mm. i feel i definitely like to have at least try and have as much of a day to myself usually if i wasn't in quarantine i would spend a day on my own uh because you mm don't and i find that really nice just not having to talk to anyone not having to worry about anyone i don't really text anyone on those days sometimes yeah. i don't even like to talk to like even my family or or anything i just need a day to myself so i can see how 
yeah, being around people can be pretty draining. We found yeah. that as well. I mean, I have a, I, I, I think I've gotten rid of the depressed days, maybe. Yeah, actually. But I normally have like a depressed day <laughs> in general. Uh, I, I, I label it depressed day because mm. I use so much energy being around people all week mm. that by the time mm. I hit Saturday, I just need a refresh. So I just lie in my bed, I eat crappy food, <laughs> I just read, read books, have bubble baths, and just escape the world. I just don't want to be around the world. Mm. And that helps re-energize mm. me. So, but yeah, it's very different in, in quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> so we are around each other 24-7. Yeah, and just thinking mm. about the other people. Well, we live in a one-bedroom apartment at the moment. And yeah, saying, oh, well, Sam's in her room. And so I'm kind of in my room. But then, oh, maybe, maybe we'll swap. And oh, maybe we want some space apart. But it's difficult to have that because there's only like one room and I sleep in the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, take some part of your psyche, basically. We're, going mm. to We're yeah. moving soon. Yeah, we are. <laughs> anyway. On that note, on that note, I we're, think we're gonna we're gonna be wrapping it up right now. Yeah. So we just wanted to say thank you again, Zach. Yeah. It's, I don't think we said thank you in the first place. So no. thank you and then thank you again. Yes. <laughs> for joining us today here on Intimate Encounters. SB. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys. That. I just wanted to say that. Maybe we can have friends. Maybe we can have great. Um uh, I just want to leave space for you to answer because I, I just know I can just talk. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much. I got so into this conversation. I think it flowed. I feel like I learned a lot. I know I need to start letting space space exit. Space. <laughs> that was a lag. That was a lag, right? That was a lag, yeah. <laughs> And we look awesome. forward to having you back in Bansko. Yes. Can't wait. Maybe we'll have to do an actual live in RRL recording with you mm. when you're here. That'd be cool. And That'd be cool, yeah. more updates. Mm. If you have enjoyed this conversation, I'm talking to you viewers, not you, you viewers Zach. Now. If you have enjoyed <laughs> it, please like, please subscribe. Tell your friends. And if you want to be on the show, we do would it. love to have you. Love to. We want to talk about everything to and do anything. with sex relationships dating friendships family socializing being <laughs> the world so if you have if you feel like you have experience in any of those areas which you should you should do <laughs> you're then, a human and you're and, breathing and you want to talk about them uh, we would love to have you because we fucking we love doing this we love it we love doing and this. we'd love to talk to you yeah talk to you later guys thank you bye, bye.